identifying automatic thoughts is an essential part of working in cognitive behavioral therapy. And the way that we access automatic thoughts can be simply noticing any time there's a change of emotion, any time that a person's expression, facial expression changes, or a tear comes to their eye, and asking what went through your mind just when that happened. Uh, for some people, it might be more challenging. I've had uh, uh, people who said that I, I don't have automatic thoughts. I don't know what they would be. I, I don't know what's going through my mind. And in that case, my job, uh, you know, it can be to help elicit them. I have a patient for whom uh, she experienced anxiety, let's say, when, uh, you know, there's soap on her hands and she, and, 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 and she notices that. And, and, and all she experiences is, is an immediate rush of anxiety. Well, I can uh, take her right into, and actually what I did, I took her right into the kitchen section of our building here and had her wash her hands right in front of me, and leave a little soap on there. And I was able to access the automatic thoughts right in that situation because she was experiencing the distress in that moment. So I could ask her, what's going through your mind right now? More recently, I saw a gentleman who claimed that he did not have thoughts. He just felt miserable. He couldn't identify any specific automatic thought. But he could identify the emotion. And in some ways, the emotions can be just a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a shortcut for thoughts. But with him, I had him uh, detail what sensations he experienced. Where did you feel that misery? Uh, where did you, did you feel it in, in, in your back? Did you feel it in your neck? Did you feel it in your head? And he's able to identify sensations, muscle tension in his back, maybe heart rate increase, maybe a bit of general discomfort. And just by having him access those sensations, uh, he was able to identify what automatic thoughts were running through his mind right when he was feeling them. And then, of course, there are some people who don't think in words. There are people who think in pictures. And I can set an image that they have. Sometimes an image is worth a thousand words, but sometimes in watching whatever image is running through your mind, I can access uh, the automatic thought that way. A woman that I saw, um, even an artist, uh, had this image of this you know, kind of, when she made a mistake, of this kind of grumpy, grumpy face, this expression on, on the face of a disapproving uh, authority figure totally in her imagination. And that was the image in her mind. Different ways of tackling that. The automatic thought could be left as an image, or I can ask you, say, when you see that image, when you look at that image of that grumpy face, what runs through your mind right now when you see that face? Automatic thought, not good enough, or I failed. And then, with, uh, even with an artist, I was able to even to access what alternate image, what ultimate, uh, alternate uh, image could be an answer to that whether it's a, a, a face of love, a face of nurturance, a face of kindness in response to that. So, so in short, there are many ways to access automatic thoughts, but if the person can't identify them when they come to see us, then we find ways to elicit those automatic thoughts right in session, whether it's through sensations, whether it's through exposure, or whether it's through imagery.